it makes this god awful sound. I was not planning on making this video, but I do have this 300 supercharger in for a rebuild and it really doesn't look that bad. The inside is actually very clean. The impeller looks great. It's got a little corrosion on the housing, but nothing crazy. And then when you spin this thing over, it makes this god awful sound. So that is not right. We're gonna dive into the supercharger and see exactly what's going on. Uh, there's gonna be a problem with the bearing. It surprisingly did not fail yet. There is hardly any play in the shaft. I don't know how many hours was on it, but this is certainly what I would call a ticking time bomb. If you pull your supercharger out and it makes that noise, it is going to fail. What I think is pretty funny is if you brought this supercharger to almost any shop, any dealer, they're gonna scrap it and wanna charge you like 1700 bucks for a brand new supercharger. In this case, this supercharger is 100% rebuildable for a much cheaper cost than completely replacing this entire supercharger. So we're gonna start taking this sucker apart and seeing exactly what's going on in the inside. I got the front housing off and internally, it really does look great. This is oily and the housing is pretty oily. And this mainly happens when you're not running a catch can. So all of the oil vapors are routed into the intake in front of the supercharger. So all the oil ends up in the supercharger and into the intercooler which eventually when the intercooler gets too clogged up with oil, it's going to lose its efficiency. The oil really isn't a bad thing in here, but eventually it will become a problem. So it's always smart to get a catch can. And man, I just cannot get over the noise that this thing is making. So we're gonna get the impeller off, get the shaft out and take a look at these bearings. Got it all apart and the problem figured out. So if you look at this, there's rust inside the bearing it is rusted. This has rust on it, and so does this collar here. But if you look at the oil, it's kind of milky. This ski undoubtedly had water in the oil from either failed intercooler or it ingested a good bit of water. But either way, when you get water in the oil, things will begin to rust if you don't address it immediately. So this bearing is rusted out, no longer good. The shaft has rust and these collars have rust on them. And that's what was causing the noise. But where this person got really lucky is they did not have a complete failure. To me, this is a failure. You do not want to run it. But if they would have continued to run it, this bearing undoubtedly would have failed and this shaft would no longer have been supported. So this would have started wobbling. And when this wobbles, the impeller wobbles and it will dig its way into the front housing. So the impeller will come completely apart, the front housing will be trashed, and the supercharger is no longer good. So this owner got really lucky. He ended up not having to buy a new supercharger, but he was very close to that point. So now I'll clean the housings up, clean the impeller up. You can see this needs some cleaning to do. It's a little rusty in here on the housing. We'll get this all cleaned up and start assembling the supercharger. The front and rear housings have both been cleaned and looking new. The supercharger impeller is cleaned up as well. And these three parts are the only things being reused when I rebuild them. So the entire shaft assembly with bearings, the gear, clutch washers, spring washers, this entire assembly gets replaced. This shaft and bearings and all of the other components that were exposed to rust this is being trashed, no longer reused, and I'm replacing this with all new OEM parts. It's important that you spend the money on quality OEM parts and not cheaper aftermarket replacements to ensure that you get the full life out of the supercharger. If you put cheap bearings in it or opt for a cheaper aftermarket rebuild kit, undoubtedly it's going to fail sooner than it should and you may even only get a few hours out of it. On important stuff like this, it is important that you only go with OEM parts and that's all that I use. So now we've got it cleaned up. We'll start assembling the housing, get the impeller on and set the slip for the supercharger. Now I have the SeaDo 300 supercharger fully assembled. All of the internals have been replaced other than the impeller. Now we're much better. When you spin this over, it's nearly silent. You can't hear anything. And that is the way that it should sound, not with that terrible rattling noise that we were hearing earlier. Now, a little noise is kind of normal. That's just a very minimal amount of bearing noise. This supercharger does not see any oil pressure when it's out of the ski, but when it's running, you do have an oil squirter going directly to the back of it. 
making sure that everything's lubricated. So if you do get one of these and it makes a little noise, that's totally normal. But when I rebuild them, I do pre-oil everything. There is going to be oil in the bearings when I ship these out. So everything runs nice and smooth now. I just had to put the front housing on and we're gonna set the slip. Now setting the slip is another one of those things where I've heard a thousand different stories on. I've heard of dealers or other shops saying that you can't reset the slip. You have to buy a complete replacement supercharger if the slip's too low, which is not the case. Your supercharger might be completely fine, but the slip is low. All you have to do is reset the slip. If you're not comfortable doing that, I can do it for you. I'll be putting a link for that in the description. I've also heard some stories where dealers or other shops say, as little as nine pounds of slip is perfectly normal and that's fine, which is also not the case. If you only have nine pounds of slip, you're not going to be making near the amount of boost pressure that you should and your performance is going to suffer from that. On a bone stock ski, maybe with a tune, I'll set the slip to 14 pounds. And of course, if you modify these superchargers to where they make more boost, the slip number has to go up. But don't let anyone tell you that your slip is low, so you need a completely new supercharger. Your supercharger may be fine. You just need to reset it. It's very easy to do, and I could do that for you. We're going to get this thing wrapped up, boxed up, and back to the customer. And just like that, the Sea Dew supercharger is done and just as good as new, if not a little better. I'll set the slip a little higher than what the factory would. So maybe this is a better supercharger than a brand new one. Now, if you guys need your superchargers rebuilt or just to have the slip set, I'll have links for both of those in the description. I appreciate you all for watching and I'll catch y'all in the next video. It makes this god awful sound. So that is not right.